Hey guys, welcome back, and today we are joined by a very special guest. For the second year in a row, we've got Bro Schmo here on the channel. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm doing good, man. It's draft season, so busy, busy, busy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, big thank you to him for coming on. We are going to be doing a two-round mock draft today. We're going to be going through it. I'll have the even picks. Bro Schmo will have the odd picks. I'll leave all his links down in the description so you guys can go check him out. And, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. I'm really excited for this one. Let's do it. So you got the number right. one pick, Chicago Bears, on the clock. It's Caleb Williams. <laughs> Is this going to be a what we would do? Uh, we could do what we would do but and mix it with a little bit of realism. Okay, okay. It's Regardless, it's, it's Caleb it's Williams. It's still Caleb Williams. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that's a no-brainer. I think every mock draft – until the draft is going to have Caleb Williams at number one. So, yeah, I mean, that's the no-brainer pick here. Um, and number two, I've got the commanders here. Um, it's between Drake May, Jaden Daniels. I know there's some smoke screens there with J.J. McCarthy. I'm not really buying it. Um, I think Jaden Daniels is going to be the number two pick. I think if we look at the offense that Cliff Kingsbury wants to run, we look at the season he's coming off of, I think he's a more pro-ready prospect right away than Drake May. Not saying Drake May's not pro-ready. I, I think Jane Daniels is a good fit in Washington, so I'm going to take him at number two to the Commanders. Okay, okay. Well, I mean, for me, I I, I just kind of run this in if I'm the Patriots. I'm, uh, I'm going to take uh, Drake May. Get our uh, quarterback of the future. Maybe get some weapons on day two. You could figure out the tackle position. Maybe, maybe get some developmental guys a little bit later, or maybe even via trade, via free agency. Kind of, kind of is what it is for the Patriots. But I think getting that quarterback comes like first and foremost. And if it's mm -hmm. Drake May, man, I'm just sprinting that card in. So do you have Drake May or Jaden Daniels ahead on your board? And if so, why do you lean whatever direction you lean? I have uh, Drake May. Uh, I think he's got the higher ceiling, or at least in terms of arm talent tools. Uh, he does need to like settle down and whatnot. There's like some things he needs to work out, like whether it's uh, his processing, he could be a tick too late, get stuck on his first read. He could be tozy in the pocket sometimes. Uh, there's a lot of easy misses, but he's someone that actually like worked the middle of the field opposed to like Jane Daniels, which a large part of that could be just scheme with Daniels where he just wasn't asked to work the middle of the field. He's got these guys that are just monsters on the outside and neighbors and uh, Brian Thomas. But uh, for me, there, there's a little bit more concern and not enough payoff when it comes to the ceiling. Uh, to have Daniels ahead of May. Yeah. Yeah, I'm there. They're really close. I lean May yeah, because like I mean, the we're ceiling, nitpicking at this point. Yeah. The ceiling is, I think, a little bit higher than Daniels. Also, I think the age is going to factor into it a little bit. Drake May is a lot younger than Jaden Daniels, I think a couple of years at least. So that's going to be something that's going to be intriguing to see come draft time. But at number four with the Cardinals, uh, we've seen a lot of trade buzz here of them maybe trading back with the Vikings. I'm not going to do that, though. I think when you've got a – I know we throw this term around so loosely, but when you've got a generational type receiver prospect in Marvin Harrison Jr. at one of their biggest needs, you take him. I'm going to take Marvin Harrison Jr. here. Keep our star quarterback healthy. I know that there was some talk that Paris Johnson was also in the ear of Marvin Harrison Jr., teammates last year at Ohio State. Um, for what that's worth, but I think Harrison to Arizona is a dream combination for all parties involved. All right, so do we want to send the trade at five for the Vikings? I think that's probably what makes the most sense, if, especially if McCarthy's still on the board for the Giants at six. I would probably take McCarthy. So if the Vikings want to get a quarterback, I think that's probably the best opportunity to do so. Yeah, and you're probably looking to jump the Giants, so there's no shenanigans there. It, it definitely makes the most sense. So we're going to go ahead send that sucker. Uh, I'm just going to go with 11 and 23, maybe like a, maybe a future first is involved. I don't know. Trade value varies from organization to organization. It varies 
wildly year after year, but going to have Vikings go to five, going to go ahead, get the quarterback. You got Sam Darnold there who could start the season and even the whole season if you need him to, but I imagine the get JJ will probably see him by a week eight or week 10, dependent large part dependent on how the season goes, but they get their quarterback of the future and, and Justin Jefferson now now knows who will be throwing to him long term, so he can get that contract done. Yeah, absolutely. Um, where are you at with JJ McCarthy? Because I know he's one of the most polarizing prospects, similar to Will Levis. I know some people are like, is it just smoke screens with McCarthy, or is there actual hype there? Where are you at in the JJ McCarthy train? Uh, I mean, I have him more of as a like mid to back end of the first round quarterback. Like I get why, why he's such an alluring prospect in terms of like the, uh, the personality, the, uh, the leadership he interviewed exceptionally well. And the arm talent is definitely there. Like, I think you would put it probably right after Drake may, uh, when you take into consideration everyone else in this class. And unlike uh, a lot of the other guys, uh, other quarterbacks in this class, he actually operated the middle of the field and did it, quite quite well you look at his uh adjusted completion percentage over the middle of the field it's uh i think the highest outside of uh guys like um bo nix and drake may his uh completion percentage on third down is the highest among the six quarterbacks so th- th- there's just a lot of things that can translate and even though he might not be like per se ready now to start like I mean, we're kind of in this new age. We have been for a while where it's like you draft a quarterback, they have to start. And I don't think that's necessarily the end all be all. I mean, look at Jordan Love, man. He waited like three years, four years before he actually became the uh, the captain of that team. So, yeah, I don't mind them I'm going there, back I, and doing that. Go ahead. Oh, I just said I don't mind them like going back and just do, doing more of a like, okay, we can wait and see. Yeah. And I'm there. He's kind of in the middle of the first round, but the traits are there. And I think outside of Penix, he might have the best ball placement of any of the quarterbacks in this class. He could throw it on a rope. So, I mean, I don't see him getting out of the top 10, but I know he's so polarizing. I just wanted your opinion on that. And number six, we got the Giants. Um, this team needs weapons dearly. And it's between neighbors or a Dunze and – well, I'm more a Romo Dunze guy. I think for the Giants, I, I like Malik Neighbors as a fit. This is a team that has drafted with speed for the last few years. You look at Wandale Robinson. You look at Jalen Hyatt. This team, you now add Malik Neighbors, who I think is a good complement to those guys as well, a little bit more physical than them. They just have so much speed on the outside that it's going to be really hard to stop them. So I've got Neighbors going to the Giants at six. All right, this makes uh, number seven pretty easy. I'm going to go ahead and send it with Joe Alt. Get that left tackle. They released Andre Dillard for good reason. They signed Calvin Ridley. Might not be like, okay, that's all we're doing at wide receiver, but I think when you're staring Joe Alt in the face, you're, you're staring seemingly the fix to your left tackle problem, then you probably should just go ahead and get it. So I'm going to go ahead and get it. I'm going to protect yeah. Will Levis. Yeah, I love that pick. At number eight, this Falcons pick is so interesting because I think it's going to be defense regardless, uh, whether it's Dallas Turner, Jared Verse, Laatu Latu. But I also really like the idea of corner here. I've messed around with corner a few times. I'm going to go with corner today. I'm going to take Quinion Mitchell out of Toledo. That's my CB1 in the class. I think he's got incredible zone coverage instincts he's got the athleticism he showed he could play press at the senior bowl every question we've had about mitchell he has answered for us and i I absolutely love what he can show so i'm going to take him pair him with aj terrell and jesse bates in that secondary and select quinion mitchell at eight all right this is another for another run in the card moment for me Add in Roma Dunze to that chicago bears wide receiver core with dj moore keenan allen Oh, I mean, you're setting up Caleb Williams for basically immediate success at this point. Uh, They don't have a lot of picks. They only have four in this draft. So maybe like a trade down could be plausible, but you really don't have to. Let's just go ahead, send it, grab a Dunze, call it a day. Yeah. And like I said, I I love Romo Dunze. I think him with Caleb 
it'd be must see TV right away. Uh, the Jets said number 10, another interesting one. I think receivers in play. I think that Brock Bowers is in play. Um, this is a team that they traded for Hassan Reddick. I would have gone Dallas Turner two weeks ago and before the Hassan Reddick trade, but that's not really a need for them. So there's a number of ways that this team could go. I also think their team, you just talked about a team that doesn't really have a lot of draft capital. I could see this being a trade, um, but I just looking at the board, there's just not really a team that really feels like a move up. So I'm going to go a different direction than what I've typically gone. And I am going to select Troy Fatanu out of Washington. Um, I just love his versatility on this offensive line. The Jets need guys that are going to be able to play. They struck gold with Elijah Vera Tucker, and he's been able to play everywhere. I think Faltanu is going to be in a very similar mold to where you could play him at guard because I don't think John Simpson's a long-term answer at guard there. You could play him at tackle to learn behind Tyron Smith, to learn behind um, Morgan Moses. I think Troy Faltanu gives them the most versatility, and I'm going to take him here at 10. Okay, this is a little bit of an interesting predicament. Uh, like, because I would have loved corner if it was available here for the Chargers. Obviously, it's not. Uh, I mean, I could go with Terry and Arnold, but I think I'd prefer to, like, mm, like in my head circulating, we're thinking right tackle. We're thinking maybe, uh, honestly, like Byron Murphy comes to mind. I think I'm just going to send it with Brock Bowers. Because currently they okay. only have Will Disley. They only have Hayden Hurst grabbing a, a Brock Bowers who can play in line. He can play in the slot. Gives you a, another weapon for uh, Justin Herbert. And, I mean, you move down. You We have pick 23 as well. So does it feel like luxury? A little bit, but I don't mind it. Yeah. I, I haven't really messed around too much with Bowers to the Chargers. But I do kind of like that. I think this team needs a tight end. You need another weapon for Herbert, especially after losing Mike Williams and Keenan Allen. So Bowers, who could play, he's basically a receiver in a tight end's body. I, I like that for Harbaugh and Herbert. At number 12 for the Broncos, I mean, we're hearing a lot of Michael Penix buzz. And I'm a big Michael Penix Jr. guy. Where do you stand on this? Do you think those are all smoke screens, or do you think after his pro day uh, that there's a – shot he goes in the top half of the first round like we're hearing uh i don't think we're gonna see bo Nix or Penix in the top half of the first round uh it's just like when I, like we're, we're gonna constantly hear stuff on quarterbacks and we've seen it over the last couple of years guys like will levis who was at one point the betting favorite to go first overall ends up falling to the second round to be fair the Titans tried to move up at the back end of the first round to get him and then you go to like the 2022 class where, well, we didn't have a quarterback until the Steelers and like everybody and their mom was trying to figure out where these quarterbacks will go. So they kept pushing them up the board. So I, I think it, 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 we are, we're probably going to see like probably those top four go in the top 15, the top 10. And, and then we'll see a little bit of a drought and then we'll see some movement at the back end of the draft, maybe to get one of those guys. Cause there's a lot of value to be had with a fifth, uh, that fifth year option. Yeah. Like, yeah, Penix, absolutely. man, I, I'm, try, I'm trying not to buy in on uh, the hype and whatnot. Like, uh, like he's a good prospect. Don't get me wrong. I just don't see him or Knicks. And I'm, I'm a big Knicks guy uh, going in the top half of the first round. If anything, I would try to propose a trade here. Yeah, that's where I was going to go. That's where I was thinking. Because you got all the edge rushers on the board. You got all the defensive tackles. Arnold's still on the board. So I think there's a number of teams that would be looking to move up. Uh, a team that I was considering a move up with would be the Rams. Obviously, they're a team that lost um, Aaron Donald. They had some good production from the rookies last year. Kobe Turner was good. Byron uh, Byron Young was good as well. But I think the Broncos, again, we talk about teams with limited draft capital. I think Denver is a team with limited draft capital. So I think I'm going to do that, actually. All right, so we did a trade here. We had the Rams move up from 19 to 12. You look at the defensive talent still on the board. 
um, with Dallas Turner, Terry and Arnold, all the edge rushers. If they want Byron Murphy or Jerzon Newton, they're here. And I am going to go with Dallas Turner. I think if we look at kind of going back to our Drake May, Jaden Daniels conversation, if you look at ceilings for edge rushers, I think Dallas Turner has one of the highest ceilings. He's an athletic freak. He's got great length. You pair him alongside Byron Young, who had a pretty solid rookie season. Um, I I love this for the Rams. Just continue to beef up this defense. Um, I would have considered Arnold, but the Trevor Davis signing, uh, I'm going to wait on corner. We still have our second round pick in this trade. So I'm going to, I'm going to take Dallas Turner at 12. All right. Raiders. Uh, I like having corner as an option here, but I mean, with how the tackle board has kind of fallen, uh, I think the considerations here are Tilanese, uh, Fuaga and, uh, JC Latham. I think they might feel, I mean, I know it's a kind of a new regime to some extent, and it's like, oh well, the the sins of Alex Leatherwood shouldn't shouldn't fall upon J.C. Latham, but maybe that bad taste is still in the mouth. So I'm going to go with Fuaga. Whether he ends up being a guard or a tackle is irrelevant. You're going to show up that right side, and you could figure it out in camp. Uh, whether it's going to be Mumford who's playing right tackle, or if it's going to be Fuaga, and then the other one could slide into right guard. Yeah, I like that pick quite a bit. Um, this is another run the card in. For me, yeah. uh, the Saints of Olu Fashanu sitting on the board here at 14. I think it's a no brainer. Um, I, I don't really understand the prospect fatigue with Olu Fashanu. Some of his reps are really good. And I know he had a couple of questionable games, but I still think he's he's my tackle too. Still, um, I think the Saints uncertainties about Ryan Rams check. Uh, Trevor Penning was not very good last season. Uh, just take a tackle here at 14, and I'm going to take uh, Olu Fashanu. All right. Well, I am the Colts here. I'm going to go ahead and snag Terry and Arnold inside, outside versatility. But with Kenny Moore back, he's going to be playing outside. Uh, and you need someone next to uh, Juju Brents anyway. Uh, currently, they have Jalen Jones, who was promising, but still it, it's the most volatile position in football. You want to keep adding depth, talent and competition to the position they also have uh was it dallas flowers who i yep. think was hurt most of the year but again depth talent competition yeah i'm there as well that's probably as a colts fan i was between there or verse um it's a good receiver class you can wait on a receiver to down the board uh arnold is a great selection here uh number 16 we've got the seahawks um I'm more a Jerzon Newton guy over Byron Murphy, but I think that the league is going to value Murphy more because we got to see him test for one. And I think just kind of his skill set translates better. The run defense aspect hasn't been great. The interior defensive line and offensive line for that matter for the Seahawks has been underwhelming. So I'm going to take, I think I'm going to go with Byron Murphy here to the Seahawks and just cheer up the interior of our defensive line a little bit. Yeah. All right. Pick 17, Jacksonville Jaguars. Don't know why I forgot this guy was on the board, but I'm going to go with Brian Thomas. Uh, Like, ideally, I wouldn't mind trading it out of this. Maybe acquiring a few more picks on day two or a pick on day two would be nice. Uh, But Brian Thomas, I know it's a similar role to, like, Gabe Davis. But honestly, it's better Gabe Davis at this point. And I know they invested financially in Gabe Davis, and they could both function. Because like I think Brian Thomas has a much higher ceiling. I think Brian Thomas, uh, his best football's ahead of him. He broke out this past year, and there's definitely areas he can polish in. I, I figured if he if he ended up returning, he would be up there with Luther Burden in terms of like top receiving prospects. So they're getting a really good prospect here in Brian Thomas that. It's just scratching the ceiling. It's just in terms of util- utilization early on, it might be very similar to Gabe Davis. Yeah, I, I like that pick. At number 18 here, we got the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, I'm going to go with Jerzon Newton. I know he's falling down boards a lot, but this is a team that lost DJ Reader. I think the interior defensive line is a group that they need to address. I like their offensive line, and again, they still have a second rounder if you want to get a guy in day two that can be a plug and play guy, a rotational guy until Trent Brown ultimately leaves. 
I, I like Jerzon Newton here. He is my D tackle one. I think he's a freak athlete, great run defender. Yes, there's some size concerns, but I love him here to Cincinnati. All right, Denver Broncos. I know I talked all that stuff about quarterback, but I I feel like I could probably put it on the back burner for a little bit because I kind of I kind of I I got another plan for him. Uh, so I'm gonna go with a different position actually with the edge class kind of falling like this. I'm gonna get some more edge help because currently they're pretty undersized at the edge position with guys like uh oh, I can't remember off the top of my head. But yeah, Baron Browning, Nick ben, uh, Benito, those are smaller guys. So I'm going to go with Jared Verse here and then see what I can do maybe a little bit later on to get a quarterback for the Broncos. Yeah, I like that pick as well. At number 20, we've got the uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, I'm going to go with your guy. I'm going to go with Jackson Powers Johnson here. Uh, I don't mean to Sex steal appeal. him from your Dolphins, um, but I think this team – needs a center. They've needed a center for quite some time. Um, I'm going to take Jack's powers Johnson here. He's usually not on the board and I pick here at 20. Yeah. This is kind of a rough predicament you left me in. Cause now like no Jackson powers Johnson. So I can't really get like, I'd probably play him early at guard. Cause they brought in Aaron Brewer. Uh, all the like left side of the line prospects are gone. Like JC Latham again, more right side, unless you want to play him at right guard. I'll uh, be still hella big there. Like I love Mims's upside. So I'm right now, I think I'm actually between Mims and Barton. Cause like Mims, like he's moldable. Like you can mold this cat into the heir apparent for Terry and Armstead. Question is, do I just want to go for Graham Barton and just kind of insert him in at right guard there, though he's played left uh, on the left side his whole career. I think I'm going to go with Mims. Yeah, I'll just send it. I'm going to roll the dice. Yeah, I think this is kind of – did you consider – I know there's some talk that if one of the quarterbacks is on the board here at 21. No, absolutely say. not. Okay. No. I didn't think so. I didn't think so. But, but I uh, we're here. we've made, we've made – essentially made our bed with Tua. Like we're probably going to have to pay him. Uh, and even if we take like Michael Penix, like I don't think Penix is a upgrade over Tua. And I mean, they're both what? Probably similar in age. I feel like Tua's probably around 24, 25. I feel that way, but I bet you he's like 26. Uh, yeah, he's 26. Penix is going to be 24 by the beginning of the season. It's not that, to me, that's not that big of a difference. Yeah, I'm there as well. Uh, 22 for the Eagles. I. I I hate making Eagles picks because I already can read the comment sections because I'm going to yeah, take a corner. Hell with them. <laughs> I'm going to take a corner. All right, so at number 22, we got the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm going to take Nate Wiggins. I think the size was a concern coming in at the combine at like 173 pounds, but I think he was mostly just slimming down to run the faster time. He's excellent in press coverage. He's got great speed. Um, I love what he can offer to this team, a team that really needs secondary help. I'm going to take him here at 22. Yeah, and I mean, he was up to 182 at his pro day. He's the youngest corner prospect in this class. He has length, which means he's he can put more mass onto that frame, so I'm not worried about his size one bit. Let's see. Chargers. I took Brock Bowers. Now I should probably, maybe, potentially go with the defensive class but i don't think i am i think i'm gonna stick with offense oddly enough for the chargers i'm gonna go with jc latham put him at that right tackle spot yeah or graham barton yeah, no nah, i'm going jc latham i think either or barton or latham would be solid decisions here whether you're looking for the center don't really know what's going on with Corey Lindsay. will he be able to play next year i don't think there's a final verdict on that yet but you know you can upgrade over Trey Pipkins. Yeah, absolutely. I like that pick quite a bit. Uh, we're going to take a guy you just mentioned here. Um, I'm going to select Graham Barton to the Cowboys. Could play guard, can play center. This team lost a lot. He could play tackle if you need him to as well. I mean, I like Barton quite a bit. He's one of the nastiest blockers in this class. He plays with such a high motor. I think the Cowboys just need a guy who's going to be a dominator in the run game. 
go back to their roots where they were at their best when they were running the football. I'm going to take Grant Barton here. All right. This one's a run in the card. I, I, Cooper DeJean, easy. You're going to get him to play on the outside, but if you need him to, he could probably play that one of those safety spots. I know they brought in uh, Xavier McKinnon. Um, you could probably upgrade over Keyshawn Nixon in the slot. He's a really good return man for him, though. And that's really why they probably brought him back. But regardless, like Eric Stokes can't stay healthy. Carrington Valentine was a seventh round pick, though what you saw was encouraging. I'm going with secondary for the Packers. Yeah, I think if he's on the board, I think almost every time he's been on the board, I've taken Cooper DeGene to the Packers. I really love that selection. Um, for the Bucks here at 26, I'm going to take Kool-Aid McKinstry here. This is a team that traded Carlton Davis. They lost some guys in the secondary. I know Laiatu Latu is still on the board there, but I think you can maybe get another edge maybe like an Austin Booker or a Jonah Ellis, one of those guys who I think could fill that role in the second round. Uh, but I am going to take Kool-Aid McKinstry here and just improve the secondary to pair alongside Jamel Dean. All right. I want to offer a trade here for the Cardinals. Because uh, this is a team that's building. They are fully in. They are building. You're kind of hoping for a big turnaround this year. That might not necessarily come, but – I think it's going to be in this part of the draft where the Broncos would want to trade back up to get that quarterback, get that fifth year option. So I'm going to offer next year's first for this year's first for the Cardinals. Cause honestly, the Cardinals that uh, getting next year's first might come in clutch and you might be getting a top 20, maybe even a top 15 pick depending on how you feel about the Broncos roster. Do they give up any sort of picks? Do they give up 83, which they got back from the Rams? Do you think they give up anything like that? No, I think you could probably do just a one-for-one one and maybe call it a day in real life. And, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to take Bo Nix here for the Denver Broncos. They come out of this with two first-rounders, uh, which is kind of nice. I mean, you get your franchise quarterback, hopefully, and you – Get some edge help. Like I feel like the the way the bo the Broncos are currently built, I feel like you you have to get cheap at quarterback, especially if you're gonna maybe retain some of those guys or if you're gonna hold on to some of those big contracts. And I mean, Sean Payne. I don't I don't know how big Sean Payne feels like he's got a big leash there in Denver, but like truly how big can that leash be? I imagine they're going to want to see some success in the next couple of years. So grabbing a quarterback is not a way to ensure it, but it's a way to maybe uh, extend that leash. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, with Stefan Diggs uh, on the board here or off the board, excuse me, with the bills trading Stefan Diggs, uh, I think receiver, it was a need before. I think it's even more of a need now. I like Khalil Shakir. I like the Curtis Samuel pickup, but uh, I think Adonai Mitchell is the no-brainer pick for me here for the Buffalo Bills. Um, has some size to play on the outside. Good separator down the field. Really good athlete. Um, I'm going to select Adonai Mitchell at 28 to the Bills. Yeah, no, I think the Bills are in a good position probably to uh, try to get a receiver here. I mean, especially in this class. Uh, I'm running the card in for the Lions. I'm going Liatu Latu. Yeah. Uh, at this point, I mean, they got Marcus Davenport on a one-year deal. Uh, get that, get that guy that can play next to Aiden Hutchinson, and you get another technician. It's just phenomenal. I mean, the value is absurd at this point. Yeah, um, I love that. I, I, I would have had Arizona trade back up there for Liatu Latu. That was an idea I had. Um, because I think Edge is a big need, but if the Lions could get Law to and you get Hutchinson and then you add Reader, I mean, that defense could be lights out next season. And number 30, so we got the Ravens on the board here at 30. This is a team that lost a lot of help on that offensive line, uh, lost Morgan Moses. They lost John Simpson. I'm going to take our right tackle of the future here and select Tyler Guyton. Yes, he's a little bit raw, but I think he kind of fits exactly what Baltimore needs. So I'm going to take him here at 30. Uh, at 30. 
Right. So I got the uh, San Francisco 49ers. What a love Tyler Guyton, but you know, sometimes the draft doesn't doesn't shake out to the way you thought it was. Sometimes it just doesn't. And in this case, that's one of the uh cases here. Uh I actually think I kind of like um I think you could stick with offensive line and go with like Zach Frazier who could play guard. They kind of had problems at that right guard spot. I know they brought in uh Fliaciano, however the hell you say his name, uh, to kind of ease that right guard spot. They were having problems with Spencer Burford there during the season last year, but they don't really have a long-term option. And I mean, you can say the same is true for uh, left guard, which they're going to have to pay uh, Aaron Brooks banks. There we go. Banks. Uh, eventually, I think uh, over the next two years, they're going to have to figure out what to do with him. So Frazier gives you some versatility along the interior. And it gives you a guy that could probably, oh, that should be able to start right away. Yeah. Frazier is one of my guys in this class. I absolutely love him. I think he should be a first rounder. I, I love that pick for San Francisco. Even if you want to play him at center, I think, the center Jake Brendel was not incredible for them. So um, yeah. at number 32, um, I'm going to make everyone's favorite pick here and just take Xavier worthy to the chiefs and call it good. Speed um, kills. Yeah. I just, I think it's the pick that makes the most sense for them. Round two, round two Carolina Panthers. The world is your oyster. What receiver do I want? <laughs> I mean, do I feel ballsy enough to feel like a receiver gets back to them at 39? I kind of do, but uh, I'm thinking they bring in Deontay Johnson. They have Adam Thielen. They're kind of hoping to get something from Mingo. Uh, do want to add more competition there. Uh, Lad McConkey is screaming out to me. Xavier Leggett screaming out to me. Get that big vertical threat that DJ, DJ Chark just wasn't. Just dropping balls left and right. I think I'm going to go with Leggett. I like that one. I didn't, That's another guy. Was really high on at one point, and then I just feel like a lot of people just have kind of jumped off the Xavier Leggett train. I know you're still a big Xavier Leggett guy. I, I never really understood that. I think Leggett's an awesome receiver prospect. I think he's going to be really good uh, wherever he goes. So I love that for yeah. Carolina. I think it's just the sheer girth, how deep this wide receiver class is. Yeah. Yeah, I'm there as well. Uh, number 34, we've got the New England Patriots. I mean, they could go a line. They could also get a receiver, which I think receiver is – pretty desperate of a need, but I, I think I am going to go with a tackle here. I'm going to take Jordan Morgan from Arizona. He's got, he could play tackle, could play guard. I think this team just really needs to build from the trenches, build from the inside out. They they've had troubles on the offensive line really since Brady's last year, just and try and protect Drake may the best you can. We just talked about it. It's a deep receiver class. I think you can get value later on. I'm going to take Morgan at 34. Okay, I got Marvin Harrison Jr. What's next on the agenda for the Arizona Cardinals? I picked up a first next year that I feel really good about. Uh, what what would be next? It's kind of like best player available, right? I could look at like Chop Robinson uh, to put opposite of B.J. Ojolari. They actually have a decent enough rotation there at the edge position. Uh, I could look at corner. Mm, corner class is it's fine. I feel like it'll be good on in the third round as well, so I don't have to go with that. Uh, they did add a lot of interior guys, though. They're, they're kind of like not great, though. They're fine. They're just not great. Uh, uh Golly, this feels more tough than it should be. Uh, might just end up sending it with Chop Robinson. I think that's probably what I'm going to do. I'm just going to send it with Chop Robinson. Yeah. Grab a high upside edge player. Yeah, I love that pick for them. Um, I think that's a 
that's a pick that he can kind of be used similarly to, I think, how they used Hassan Reddick in Philly with um, Gannon, just kind of use him as that designated pass rush role, and he could be awesome for them there. So I love that for Arizona. Um, for Washington here, this is a pick that I hate um, because Jordan Morgan's off the board. Uh, I know they got another one. Uh, Kingsley is there. Eh, I'm not in love with Kingsley as much as some other people are. I kind of am considering going edge here. Uh, I think I am going to do that. I'm going to take Darius Robinson from Mizzou, um, a guy that I really like. He can kind of play anywhere for you. I think that's someone that – um. Oh, I'm blanking on – I know the new head coach. I see his face. Um, oh, uh, Dan Quinn? Yeah, that's a guy Dan Quinn's going to love, just the versatility. You can move him around anywhere. Um, I'm going to take him here to Washington. Okay, I got the Chargers. I think it's about time we address defense. The question is, I'm like stuck by three interior players who I'd want to take here. Like, I love getting the beef in the middle with Tavondre Sweat. Uh, I th- I think Braden Fisk is probably going to go in this top 50 range. Uh, so, like, he's definitely in the cards there. Uh, just ends up being j- better Morgan Fox. Uh, and then, of course, you gotta got to think about Chris Jenkins, who's Jim Harbaugh's guy. So he's definitely uh, in the cards here. So the question is, do we go with the hype train that is? Because I think ultimately, do we go with the hype train that's Fisk? Or do I go with Harbaugh's guy? I mean, coaches have a – coaches coming from the college ranks to the to the NFL, they have a track record of specifically not drafting their guys. So I think I'm going to go with Braden Fisk here for the Chargers. Interesting. I haven't seen that one done a lot, but I kind of like that idea for them. Just like you said, just – Pairing him in that interior with Tui Tui Pelo too, and you've got some guys there that are really intriguing. Yeah, um, still got Khalil. This still got Joey. Yeah, so Braden fifth to the Chargers at number thirty-eight. I know everyone wants to go receiver here for the Titans, but I don't really like the idea of receiver. You got Calvin Ridley, maybe you still got DeAndre Hopkins, maybe Traylon Burks can finally break out eventually. I'm going to wait on a receiver and I'm going to go with Tyler Newbin because I think safety is kind of an underrated need for the Titans. And Newbin is, I think the best safety in this class. I think he fills a need right away. Great in coverage, good hitter. Yeah. There's some speed concerns with them, but I, I really like Newbin. I'm going to take him to the Titans at 38. All right. Carolina Panthers. Uh, I don't know if I want to make a move on edge. Didn't really play in my cards there. So now I'm looking at a possibility at center, but I think they're hoping Austin Corbett comes back healthy. I'm looking at corner because they brought in Dane Jackson, but he's more of a rotation guy. Uh, You could also look at linebacker because Dan Morgan's the GM now, so probably would want to get his hands on on a linebacker in this class at some point. Uh, if it's corner, I'm probably looking the way of, um, I'm just not in love with this next tier of corners. I'd rather be like, Hey, you know what? Let's see what, what falls in into the third round. So I actually think I'm going to go with linebacker and I'm going to, I'm going to go with, uh, Peyton Wilson. I think he he just feels like someone that Dan Morgan's just gonna absolutely like fawn over. Yeah, yeah, I love that pick. That's a pick that I like to make as well. I really like his fit, oh, Carolina. Nice. They also lost Luvu. They lost some help in that linebacker department. I think Pey- Peyton Wilson is a really good fit there. Uh, at number forty, this could be another linebacker spot. I think we took Darius Robinson. But they did get Bobby Wagner. They did get Luvu. So I'm going to kind of wait on linebacker till later. Um, the position I'm thinking, I do kind of like corner, but Lad McConkey's just sitting there. And team lost Curtis Samuel. And I like Jahan Dotson. I like Terry McLaurin. I'm going to complete the receiver trio here, get Jaden Daniels another weapon. I know we're passing on O line 
twice here, but the value for Lad McConkey here at 40, I think, is really good. I'm going to take him to the commanders. All right. With the Packers, they do need a linebacker. They uh, released Devondre Campbell. They got Quay there. They have some of their uh, old guys there, like, uh, what is it, Isaiah McDuffie. Uh, but I think they'll probably look to get maybe a higher upside individual. You already saw one linebacker just come off the board, so you probably want to send it. I'm going to grab uh, Edwin Cooper. Get yeah. that length, get that speed. Yeah, love that pick as well. For the Texans at 42, uh, doesn't look like we're going to be going receiver for them anymore uh, with one of these two seconds because you got Nico Collins, Tank Dell's coming back. You just picked up Stephon Diggs. So, where I'm looking with this team, with the first pick, I am definitely going to take. I think Tavondre Sweat is a no brainer here for me because this team needs some defensive line help on the interior. Tavondre Sweat is a guy that I absolutely love. I think he gives you more pass rush upside than people realize, and he's maybe the best run stuffer in this class. So I'm going to take Sweat to the Texans at 42. All right, man. I'm. I'm looking at this edge class. I'm looking because Falcons they haven't they haven't had a feared pass rusher in like the last decade. The so question is, who do I want? Who do I get? Do I like the power of Marshawn Nealand? I kind of do. I kind of do. So I'm gonna actually snag Marshawn Nealand here for the Atlanta Falcons. I like that one. Nealand is. A really good player. I like him quite a bit, especially on the opposite side of um, Grady J. Uh, comes back, and yeah, yeah I think that's going to be a, a nice duo there. At number 44, um, this is a pick that – what the heck? Okay, there we go. At number 44, um, this is a pick that I, I think the Raiders would be ecstatic. You look at the board, Michael Penix Jr. is still sitting there. Um, they, we tried to get a trade up with them earlier. Didn't end up working, but he ends up falling into their laps here at 44. Uh, I'm, I'm going to take Michael Penix jr. Here and not overthink it. All right. We grabbed the tackle for the saints. Now I just kind of want to have fun. Like that saying says girls just want to have fun. And I think we're going to have fun Keon Coleman. We're going to end uh, the minor little drought we had for the last five picks with wide receivers and take Keon Coleman. They have AJ uh, Perry, but or AT Perry, who, yeah, he, he came on at like the last couple of games for the season, but by no means does that mean don't address the position. Bring in another big guy who, in my opinion, has higher upside than AT Perry. And I, uh, yeah, yeah, man. Just get some more size. You already have Rashid Shahid. You already have Chris Olave. So let's send it. Keon Coleman. Yeah, I like that one quite a bit as well. Their receiving room, especially because Michael Thomas is gone now. It's just, I mean, he wasn't doing anything anyways, but it's just even slim, more slim than it was before. Uh, speaking of receivers, I think we see another one come off the board here with my Colts. Um, the question is, which one? Now, I have a guy in mind that I've taken before that I really like his fit with this offense simply due to his chemistry with the quarterback. Um, and that's where I'm going to go. I'm going to take Ricky Parasol from Florida. I love his love chemistry Parasol. here with Anthony Richardson. You've got that chemistry. It was his go-to target last year. This is a guy who can separate. He's a guy who can play in the slot, can play in the on the outside. He's got really good athletic traits. He's physical. I think he's a little bit of everything and a mixture of what the Colts need. Um, I think he's an upgrade over Alec Pierce. I'm going to take him here at 46. All right, New York football giants. They went wide receiver. They addressed offensive line during the offseason, but I don't think that means they're done because their left guard position is still kind of wide open. They're probably hoping to get something from uh, Izudu. Uh, they brought in Stinney to compete, but I think I might swing on, on some, some guard help here. 
Yeah, I think I'm going to go with Mason McCormick. I that love the McCormick, guy. man. I had a feeling you were going to go there. He's been flying up boards. Oh, he's great. I love him. He also, I think one of the more underrated aspects of his game, I mean, he started 57 consecutive games for for South Dakota State. So he comes with so much experience on that offensive line that I think is very valuable. I love that pick for the New York Giants. Um, at number 48, I'm going to go with a corner here for the Jaguars. And I think, I mean, they made some moves in the secondary, but it wasn't anything that moved me. Uh, Anis Ragstraw is a guy that I really like. I'm going to take him here. He's got the athletic traits that are solid for the position. Uh, the production, maybe not out of this world, but I think just the overall potential, and you can see it on tape. He's electric. He moves really well. I think he fits really well alongside Tyson Campbell, so I'm going to take him at 48. Okay. Uh, Bengals, they got Trent Brown on a one-year deal. They, they need to look to the future at that position. This is where I'm going to snag Kingsley Suomatea. I think his upside's just ridiculous. I think he's a more natural right tackle than he is left. Uh, you go back to like 2022 when he was over at the right side. It was much better. And I, again, I think there's some traits there that are very intriguing. And you don't have to start him right away, which is kind of like the perfect situation for him. Yeah, I like that one as well. At number 50, we got the Eagles and... We took Nate Wiggins earlier. Now we're kind of looking maybe on the offensive line. I'm thinking maybe one of the guard spots. And I like Cooper Beebe here uh, just because I like his versatility. But I think I'm going to go with Christian Haynes and just get a guy. Actually, no, I'm not going to go Christian Haynes. I take that back. <laughs> I'm going to go. This is tough. I don't like the spot for the Eagles here, just with the way this board has fallen. Um, linebacker is a position I am considering, but it just is like there is a bit of a drop off between the first two and the next guys for me. Um, but I'm gonna go. I'll I'll take Junior Colson here at 50. Okay. I like his coverage abilities, which was the big issue I felt like with the Eagles last year, they didn't have any linebackers that could cover. I know they brought in Devin white, but I don't think he solves their coverage problems. Zach bond, maybe more of a rotational guy. I'm going to take junior Colson here at number 50. Pittsburgh Steelers. You took Jackson powers. Johnson. That was beautiful. I love that. Uh, I think I'm actually, this is now we're in day two. This is wide receiver range for the Pittsburgh Steelers. They, all, they typically are really good at hitting on day two wide receivers. I'm going to go with uh, they just lost a crafty route runner in Deontay Johnson. I'm going to replace that with Roman Wilson. Yeah, I like that pick a lot. That's a good one. Now, number 52, we took Dallas Turner earlier for the Rams, and I'm going to take a corner here. I'm going to take TJ Tampa. This is one of my favorite landing spots for Tampa is the Rams. You brought, brought in Tredavious White on a one-year deal, kind of a prove-it sort of deal. I still think corner is very much in play for them, though. Um, secondary was not one of their strengths. You got Kobe Durant, Tredavious White. It's not really a strong cornerback room. I'm going to take TJ Tampa, get some size, get some quickness on that outside. Um, I'm going to take him here to the Rams. All right, you grab Nate Wiggins. You grabbed... Uh... Junior Colson, do I stay with the defense for the Philadelphia Eagles? Because uh, the offensive line class feels like, eh, don't really have to go there if I don't want to. Uh, but they do love their trenches. Currently entrenched as starters at safety as uh, uh, Sidney Brown and Reed Blankenship because CJ uh, Gardner Johnson is going to be playing in the slot, though they did bring back uh, Vontae Attic. So there's a little bit more flexibility there. So actually, I don't really have to go safety if I don't want to, which I don't think I will, but I could. Now that I bring it up, I could. I could have fun, go grab a wide receiver because Devontae Parker is not a good wide receiver. Three Dolphins fan, I know. <laughs> um, And I. Honestly, like, I, I want to think that they really like 
Uh, moving, sticking uh the the Cam Jurgens into uh center, and then having Tyler Steen play that right guard spot. But I mean, they honestly they they could just. Oh man, this is a little tough. I mean, uh, there's Christian Mahogany, there's Christian Haynes, one mine Haynes there, but mm. Mm -mm -mm. what a predicament, man! The Eagles. It's a good predicament to have. Oh man, am I? Am I sleeping on somebody? I don't think so. I think I might just go with the... I mean, you might want to look for an heir apparent, but for uh, stinking uh, Lane Johnson, so do I go with one of the project tackles here? I don't love that. I think I'd rather like do that maybe on day, day or on the uh, in the third round. So maybe, maybe I'm sorry I'm taking long with this man. This is this is tough. The Eagles are a tough team to draft for. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with. I know what I want to do. I just don't think they're gonna do it. Ah, do you, you know what? Screw it. I'm gonna do what I want. I'm going. I'm gonna go with Jalen Polk. Get okay. that junkyard dog that can play outside. He can play inside. He gives them some vertical capability. I'm going to do it. I'm sending it. Jalen Polk to the Eagles. I like that one. Uh, I thought you were going to go Corley there as like a slot option, but I like Polk quite a bit. Too. Yeah, I, I want a little bit more versatility. I think Corley truly is just kind of a slot guy in yeah. the NFL. Uh, for the Browns at 54, uh, I think this is a no-brainer uh, defensive tackle pick. Uh, which defensive tackle kind of is the question. Um, I think I, I think we talked about him earlier. Chris Jenkins still on the board. We're going to take him, just improve the interior of that defensive line, and um, we'll take Chris Jenkins to Cleveland. Yeah, they got a ton of short-term deals there on the interior, so makes sense. Uh I'm the Dolphins. I love being the Dolphins. Uh, I'm gonna get that right tap or that right guard. Excuse me. I'm gonna get Christian Haynes. The, this whole draft, I'm just gonna devote to making the offensive line better. I feel like they've ignored it for far too long. And the one guy that they drafted well uh, in Robert Hunt, they couldn't even keep. So let's get younger. Let's get hopefully a guy that they can financially afford by the end of his four-year deal yeah absolutely at 56 um the cowboys we talked about it we took graham barton because we wanted to be able to run the football again but you can't run the football if you don't have someone to hand the football off to i know some people like deuce vaughn i just don't i don't see him being a number one running back a guy that i do Not see that size <laughs> no the guy i do see being a number one running back though is trey benson so i'm gonna take trey benson i know that everyone's going to take Jonathan Brooks. I get it. I like Trey Benson more than Brooks. That's what it comes down to. I know you yeah, like man. Trey Benson more than Brooks. We're going to take Trey Love Benson him. here. Yeah, I think Trey Benson could go higher too. I mean, we'll see, but all right. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you took uh, Kool -Aid. Kool -Aid. Uh, linebacker class is kind of out of it right now for me. You took the top three or we took the top three. So I'm not even going to look there. I'm not even going to go there. Mm -mm. Uh, right guard cemented, uh, with Cody mock. I know it was a rough year, but they expect him to get better. Uh, do I then just go with edge question is what edge? I mean, that sounds actually pretty good here. It is. Uh, it depends on what they want. Do they want a Braswell? Do they want an Ellis? I mean, I, I feel like they'd want to maybe go with like uh, the athletic and physical upside of Braswell. Probably makes a little bit more sense because uh, they're going to have to decide if they want to pay Joe uh, try on. And they got Gregory on a one-year deal. Yeah, Diaby's going to be there for a few years. So, yeah, I'll go with Braswell. 
Yeah, I, I think I'm higher on Braswell than consensus. I really like him. Uh, I love that pick for the Bucks, and they get to double dip um, uh, with Alabama players. Uh, for the <laughs> Packers here, who did we take? We took Cooper DeGean, and we took Edron uh, Cooper. Cooper. Um, I think this is a perfect uh, Cooper BB spot, and I'm going to just take that guy. I This is a guy that I've never really understood why the hype isn't nope, there. He's a really him. good run blocker. <laughs> Who loves him? No, I was saying, I was like, you don't understand why nobody loves him. <laughs> yeah, I just don't get it. He's a really, really good blocker. He's great in the run game. He's got size. He's got versatility. I think he's kind of what Green Bay is looking for here. I'm going to take him here. I think Green Bay has had a heck of a draft. Okay, Texans, they took Tavondre Sweat. I'm actually – I'm going to get in on the running back class. Uh, Dallas's medical team did the surgery for Jonathan Brooks. I don't know. Maybe Houston being in Texas has some little insight on that. Joe Mixon is okay. Let's not act like he is – anything more he's not a top 10 back so and i don't know it feels like this new coaching staff just doesn't love uh damian pierce like he should be uh, though he 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 did have a bit of a down year but uh, i'm gonna go with jonathan brooks here all right i i like that pick uh at number 60 i mean i'm really considering double dipping at receiver here i don't think that the bills could go wrong there just to get as much help as you need there but I still look at the corners on the board. I, I think they could get some good receivers later, but I think there's some solid corners here. Ugh, I, I'm between Lassiter and Melton. I really, really like Max Melton. Um, I'm going to take the upside of Kamari Lassiter, though. Uh, the upside? The 4 six, five upside? <laughs> we'll just take the, the guy who's been more battle-tested in the SEC. I still think he's pretty raw and unpolished. I think in the second round at this value, I like that for him. So I'm going to take Kamari Lasseter. Yeah. I think Lasseter has really good like high-end uh, corner two upside. I think he's a lot more polished, uh, actually, than consider a bit amount of the uh, prospects in this class. It's just that lack of speed does show up, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but I... Kind of is what it is sometimes. I mean, this this is good, good, good value. I think for him, I think still think he's a hell of a football player. Uh, I'm actually gonna stick with corner here for the Detroit Lions. I'm gonna go with uh, Renardo Green. I'm a big fan of Renardo Green. I think this like midday two area is just perfect for him. And he fits uh, Aaron Glenn quite a bit. I know they played a bit more zone last year, but I don't know. Sometimes that falls upon with, uh, what who do you have in the building rather than uh, what do you want to do schematically. And I think uh, Renardo Green is a good press man corner. Yeah, I love that pick. At number 62, I'm going to take a receiver here for the Ravens. I'm going to take Troy Franklin, get some more size in that, in that receiver room that I just don't think they have. A uh, guy who could take the top off the defense. I think this is incredible value for him here at 62. San Francisco 49ers. I took Frazier, and I think it is now time that I maybe grab a corner. Currently in the nickel position, it's it could be Diamador. Uh, what is it? Lin, it's not Lenoir. It's like Lenore. Lenore. There we go. But he's probably playing outside. He played outside most of the time last year. Ombre Thomas is like, meh. So I'm going to go with Mike Sainer still. Like I'm going to get a little, I'm going to get a fiery competitor there on the, uh, in the slot. Yeah, I love that move for the San Francisco 49ers. And then we have come to the end of the draft here as the Kansas City Chiefs have the number 64 pick. I mean, I kind of want to go corner again. Just see a nice run of corners off the board here to end the second. They lost to Jerry Sneed. Now, I know Trent McDuffie is a beast. He's incredible. But I still think you could add some guys to this to this team. Um, and the secondary, and I am going to take uh, Max Melton. 
out of um, Rutgers. I think he's a guy who I think has some versatility. He's got some quickness, really, really good athlete. I really love Melton, and I think he's a good pick here at 64. Works for me. That's going to do it for us in this one. A big thank you to Broshmo for coming on to the channel. I'll leave his links down below. You guys can go check him out. That's going to do it for me. Be sure to leave a like on this video. Subscribe if you are new, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios.